Warning, this episode contains mentions of death and paranormal activity. investigation is unfolding at a downtown L.A. hotel. The body of a young woman was found in a water tank. I'm Caitlin, and you're listening to The Unexplained. As discussed in the last episode, the Cecil Hotel has a dark and violent past. There has been 16 peculiar deaths at the hotel since it first opened in 1924, and of multiple serial killers have called it their home. A few people believe it is unlikely that it was coincidental that all these terrible events and people stayed at the hotel. While others think that's all it is, a coincidence. Ali also discussed the timeline of Elisa Land's disappearance and death in the last episode. In this episode, I'll dive deeper into the conspiracies surrounding the hotel and Elisa Lam. Theories around the hotel usually include paranormal aspects, people trying to place the blame of the death and horrors on something other than humanity. One of these theories is that the hotel is a portal. A portal is a place where paranormal activity is heightened due to the fact that the veil between worlds is weaker there. Another well-known place that falls under this phenomenon's effect is the Conjuring House. Now, if you don't know what the Conjuring House is, you truly have been living under a rock for the past two years. It is one of the most haunted places in the world. The events that took place are terrifying enough that they were developed into a horror movie. After learning about other places that were portals, it makes the prospect of the Cecil Hotel being one other, rather scary. It also makes the theory that Elisa was being possessed by a spirit or running from one more likely to have been correct. Another theory is that a dark entity or spirit resides at the hotel. Many people believe it has been there from the beginning and others believe that the events that have taken place has caused it to be created. I know what you must be thinking. How the hell can a dark entity be created? Well, it is possible. There is a being called an egregore, which is created by negative energy. The hotel with its history of suicides, murders, drug dealers, serial killers, and many other types of people would fit this perfectly. I mean, the place has even been referred to as a place where dreams go to die. Knowing that this being is real and that it is formed the way it is, I know it would fit the theory that some of the accidents were coincidental but it wouldn't explain the crude nature of some of the deaths and I would have no clue of when the spirit came along. To me, I believe it would be more likely that there was a dark entity there the whole time, seeing as the first death occurred the year the hotel opened, when a man took his life choosing a gun as as his way out. This whole theory is supported mainly by how dark and heavy the hotel feels when entering it. But that can be put down to the psychological effect that entering a place with a well-known morbid history has. It has also been argued that whatever spirit resides in the hotel either poses as the devil or is the devil. This theory was sparked from the serial killer Richard Ramirez, always known as the Night Stalker. He called the hotel home while he was committing 13 murders before attempting another 5, along with many other crimes he was convicted of. It is unknown how many crimes that he committed that went unnoticed. When asked why he did what he did, he replied that the devil had made him do it and hail Satan, thus sparking the conspiracy that the hotel is under the influence of the devil. If this were to be true, it would explain why Elisa had a terrified expression etched on her face in the elevator footage. Now, let's get to Elisa Lim, the real reason why all of you are listening. Before Elisa's death was ruled as an accidental drowning, basically everyone believed she'd either been murdered or possessed. The reason for the paranormal being dragged into her case was due to the specific circumstances surrounding it. It would have been impossible for anyone to have dumped her body into the water tank as they would have had to carry her up a ladder that's around 3 meters tall. Now, if she'd been carried up a ladder, there would have been evidence of bruising or cuts on her body as it is impossible to drag someone up a ladder in any state without them gaining physical injuries. In Elisa's autopsy report, however, there was shown to be no physical injuries. This means that either she climbed up the ladder and into that tank willingly, or something forced her to. This is where the paranormal comes into it. See, some believe that Elisa Lam was attempting to play the elevator game. The elevator game is a game that sends you to another world. There is no real evidence supporting this though, and while the elevator footage was weird, she seemed to be more afraid and aware of something just outside of the elevator. 
The main thing about the elevator footage, other than her actions that is peculiar, is the fact that the elevator's doors don't close until after she's gone. Everyone who has done their research knows that while Elisa's actions were weird, it can be explained in the official police reports by her past of psychotic episodes. The elevator not closing cannot be. There is no reason that they would have stayed open. The only way it would have done that, what it did, was if someone was holding the elevator on that floor, and there was no one else in the footage to prove that theory. So, was this the paranormal tampering with the elevator and not letting her leave? Or was something else at play? I know while having the case be a paranormal mystery would be cool, I personally don't believe the theories. I find people's different takes on the events interesting, but I'd have to agree with the police's judgement of accidental drowning as the cause of death. People have tried to disagree by saying it can't be because she was found naked and face up, but there are reasonable explanations for these factors. Lisa could have undressed herself as hypothermia kicked in, the tanks being 15 floors above ground level, meaning they could get extremely cold. The water would also have fluctuated from being used on and off, meaning that could have shifted her body to being face up. Overall, it's not up to me to decide what you believe though, whether you believe that the paranormal have a hand to play in her death, or it was just an accident. Elisa Lamb's death was a tragic event that occurred at a hotel that was notorious for death and violence. The elevator footage sparked interest in her case and conspiracies arose, but her death was a shock to all at the time and a tragedy. People still read the blogs that she wrote and to some it is a comfort knowing that she's still impacting people's lives through her writing so long after her death. We may never know what truly happened to her and people may always disagree about it, but in the end, she was just a 21-year-old college student who met her end too soon. Rest in peace, Elisa Lam.